Oh, and then we got our, our dinosaur this week. Oh, yeah. Oh, what the fuck is going on with this thing? This is why I don't like, um, like the chains. Yeah. They get, all, they get wrapped up and they're almost impossible to tangle. See how entangled up that is now? Let me see it. There, you got it. Uh, you good now? Oh, uh, oof. That's a stinky. start this week is this uh what do I do just go into beanie Is that what you want me to do? Hold on. I got my whetstone training mug. You see that? Are we running? We're running. We're running on the video. Oh, 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 oh. I'm in training to be a good drinker. Yay. Testing, testing. Am I supposed to do that? You could, but it's not allowed, so you're not gonna. No, that's not helping. Alright, here we go. Let's see here. Corey? Do 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 do. Okay, and here we are with the uh, episode number three, which happens to be my favorite number, number three. I don't know, what, what does that mean in, in, uh, in numerology? You know anything about numerology? Like, what, what would number three be? Actually, no, I don't. I don't know numerology. If, if you know anything there? about numerology, then, then uh, hit us up. And explain number three. Explain why I like number three. Yeah, why do you like number three? Is it something that pops up? It doesn't pop up, but it... it um, I think it's just the way it looks. It looks, it looks cool. Have you ever had like numbers, certain like uh, sequences and numbers, like constantly show themselves, like throughout? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight pops up a lot. Twenty-eight pop used to pop up a lot. I have had um, things occur at, at twenty-eight. I had a number twenty-eight. Steve was number twenty-eight at one point. Um, something happened to me when I was twenty-eight years old. And then forty-three is a number that popped up one time. And, um, a but, lot. Yeah. Apparently, like... Point three. Apparently, I do know um, when numbers tend to pop up for some reason, it's something the universe is trying to catch your attention with because there's something um, uh, important about that number. Like you said, it might have been something that happened when you were 28. It might have been a number that you ran when you were racing. You know, it's, it's a common thread. But it's also the universe saying, take note of this for some reason. But it's a very personal thing, too. So, really, you know, a lot of people are not going to know why or what the reason is. But maybe there's, uh, coming down the road, there's a reason for number three. Is it, it, like, lately, has it been showing itself to you, or...? No, I just said that's my favorite number. I didn't, I didn't make it. Oh, anything. that's so your like, favorite number? Why is it number three? Yeah. Um... Yeah, so it's our third, third, third podcast. Um, 
Okay. Night number three, and, and here we are. Yay! We're back again. Yeah. After a, after a, a long week of doing other things other than podcasting and everything else. What the what now was the news this week at the uh, the cottage conundrum here? Oh my goodness, we got news. Um, our little dog Beanie, our Lily Bean, um, is gonna have to have knee surgery because her um, knee has been popping in and out, Ow. and um, she's been limping on and off for about a year. We've been treating it with the vet, and now officially it's just it's out. It's not going back in. It's out, it's proud, and it yeah. is not going back in, baby. Yeah. So, um, we saw the vet today. He prescribed her anti-inflammatories. We're going to give it a month and see how she does. And then we're going to um, probably look into scheduling having her knee fixed. Ow. Yeah. That's probably like going to be the fifth knee I've fixed on several different dogs. A three-legged bean, a three-legged bean. Because it was two on Bud, one on Pickles, one on Buddy, and now one on Beanie so far. So the third knee. This is a very yeah. expensive trip too. Is yeah, but apparently not as expensive as where we used to live. So um, it's going to be like a thousand dollars less than it would have been, which uh, is helpful. It's always very helpful when that happens. And then, um, oh, so the other thing this week that happened was that, um, so I'm into a lot of reptile keeping and doing um, uh, bioactive, you know, vivariums and keeping animals of that sort. So I have probably over the past year have started to get into lizards, which is something I had never done throughout the past, I don't know, 14 years of keeping reptiles. Shout out to Kenneth Harkin, who is heavily into yeah. Zardos. Yeah. In fact, he's like a, um, he's got Mr. his Mr. Connors from yeah. uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Lizard keeper. Yeah. And um, so, you know, for a long time I've had snakes and turtles and I've kept tarantulas and um, you know, in the past year I just was like, I don't know, let's try lizards. I've never had them. I you know, they always kind of scared me because they're very involved. And um, I got a chameleon, so I started off with the hardest one to take care of. <laughs> but, um, and then we got a Euromastix, a bearded dragon, and now we have a pure blue female tegu. A tegu. Tegu. Is it going to get three feet long? It possibly. Possibly three yeah, feet long. Yeah. You're like, well, maybe. And then, which means, yeah, it's going to get three feet freaking long. Or maybe a little bigger, but a not. A little bigger, okay. Yeah. Even bigger than that. It's yeah. Um, it depends. I mean, it depends on what, I don't know what the parents look like. Um, I did get her from a breeder, and she is a pure blue. Um, the Argentine what, the black and whites, they get larger. Um as the reds do, but the blues t is tend to stay on a, a smaller size, so. So it's gonna be interesting. She's probably about, I don't know, 12 inches long. So, and she's mostly tail. So um, this will be quite a- Go uh, on. <laughs> so this is gonna be a, um, a learning experience. Uh, she's gonna get rather big. So, well, you know, it'll be fun. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a reptile party. Go, yeah. go, 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 Godzilla. Uh huh. In my house. And, we're, and I'm still trying to figure out a name for her. Um, I was thinking Comet because she's friggin' fast as hell. Or maybe Nova. Um, so if you got any good names out there for female lizards, um, you know, hit us up. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about our lizard. <laughs> yeah. We'll show, uh, we'll post pictures. Yeah, so we put them on Insta Instagram and uh, we'll uh -huh. also have videos on our uh, YouTube channel and our other spots. Yeah. We, uh, yes, that is. By the time this video comes out, we'll actually have our website up and everything will be going. So it's going to be three weeks into the Yay! Three weeks into having the Atheist and Witch officially a thing on, on, on uh, the interwebs. Yeah, so we're moving right along. Moving, moving, moving right along, singing a song. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what else did we do this week besides go to work? Was the uh, was the big one? 
Actually, you took two days off because one, you had to get your teeth cleaned. Yeah. And two, it was getting the Tegu. 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 Yeah, I had to drive to the FedEx um, drop point because uh, um, it was very hot up here. So the breeder would rather had her stay in a climate controlled environment instead of having her loaded up onto a truck and delivered, which, you know, you know, things go wrong with that. So, um, you know, so she made it to Egg Harbor and I drove down and grabbed her and brought her home. Drive south to get your lizard to bring him north. Bring her north. Yeah. Yep. North goes the lizard. Yep. Um, we're having a, a new segment this week because um, Christine was like, you, have, you need a segment for yourself. So I know we have, I, I'm, I'm the atheist, the Mr. Uh, Reason and Reasonable Guy. But uh, we, were, uh, we were trying something new this week, as many of you uh, out there are probably drinking this uh, summer, uh, is uh, lemonade, iced tea. I'm a big fan of uh, half and half, which is half iced tea and half, half lemonade. And I like to uh, uh, make, it, make it ourselves to save some money. And it's, uh, we, we bought some of this um, 4C light half and half iced tea lemonade. And uh, I'm not being paid to say this, but it's very good, so I recommend it. But I tried it. I, I second it. I second, I second, I second it's the 4C. It's good. So it has directions on how to make the instant half and half iced tea and lemonade, which, you know, makes sense. You know, how many scoops do I put in? So I flip this thing over and, I, and I'm looking at it and I got to see to make a serving, blah, 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 blah. To make one serving, which is 12 fluid ounces, you use approximately one tablespoon with this much water. I'm not, at that point, I was like, why, why are they telling me how much water to put in here? They already told me that one serving makes 12 fluid ounces. So it says to make a flu, 12, serve, 12 fluid ounces of this half and half iced tea lemonade mix, I need 12 fluid ounces of water, which I would think is friggin' implied by the fact that you're gonna make 12 friggin' fluid ounces, and it goes down the line here. Do you wanna make 32 fluid ounces? Well, then you're gonna need, wait for it, it's a shocker, 32 fluid ounces of Water. <laughs> Two quarts. Anybody want to guess? If you guess two quarts of water, you'd be right. <laughs> and one gallon, believe it or not, does not take two gallons of water to make. It only takes a gallon of water. I was shocked. It only takes a gallon of water to make a gallon of iced tea. I would think that it would take like five gallons because it compresses. You know, you have the, the nuclear ties that have to reintegrate, and then the radium comes into play, and the next thing you know, your two gallons of water becomes one gallon of water. I don't even think you could do, like, if you split the atoms of water. Like, I, so I don't know why, I don't know who wrote in to the poor people at, at, at 4C iced tea and, and half and half lemonade and said, Excuse me, but you know, you really need to put how much water you need to add to the mix when you're making servings of this. Because it, it, it just repeats itself. It's a it's a it's a chart that has on one side a gallon, on the other side a gallon. And I, I was so I was, wait a minute. Are you saying it's redundant? It it it, it, it insists, insists upon, upon itself. itself. It insists upon <laughs> itself. It does. And, and uh, I I found it to be I, I was I, I did floor me. I'm like not that it's wasting paper or anything. It's not. It's just it just floored me that you, they this is. Uh, Somebody, somebody was sitting there going, I don't know how to make this because they're telling me that I gotta make, to make a serving, I need, I, I need, one serving is 12 fluid ounces, okay, and I gotta use a, tea, a tablespoon of tea mix, but then, I mean, I'm now I'm lost. Okay, so I'm gonna make 12 fluid ounces, I get my tea tablespoon of mix, and now, like, what, how much water do I need? How much water do I need to make a 12 fluid ounces of this drink? How, how could you, is your brain shut off? <laughs> some of your brains over on the side sitting there thinking about like maybe I'm gonna have some fried chicken after I had the lemonade. <laughs> no, no, your brain should be sitting there and it should be saying, "Yo, dummy, if you're gonna make 12 ounces of a drink and you need a tablespoon of mix to put it into the drink, you need 12 fluid ounces of water." You're welcome. Like you know, get the common sense going. Let's let's, let's get it. Oh, uh -huh. so that's my uh, that's my atheist uh, irritation of the week. That that. <laughs> Is Brady's irritation? No, well, we have to have. I think we're gonna have Brady's bombshell, but I, I guess that would be even something else. I'm not gonna do with that. That's Brady's bomb. That's, that's my irritation. Like I see stuff uh, like that, and it just makes me go, "What is going on? Do we really need this kind of hand holding in, in America?" It's like you know what? It's like somebody out there, somewhere in the country. You know what? No, I'm, I'll leave this one up to the next time we talk. It has to do with showering, and it has to do with cleaning yourself. 
and then and I'll make that one uh, another episode of Atheist Irritation. I don't want to blow the surprise. You'll have to tune in. Wow, I don't even know about it. Yes, yeah, so holy to moly! Out. But uh, that's that's my uh, that's my Atheist Irritation of the week. Thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> Bravo! Well done. Speaking of irritation, um, should we segue into uh, Christine's horoscope spy? Oh, okay. So we're gonna do the horoscopes of the week. Um, as presented by the Hood Witch. Wow. So. Uh, I like to say at the Hood Witch, whatever you printed out there, she has got some fiery heel yeah. things going on. And you know why? Some sexy. There's a reason for that. <laughs> and it Leo says, yeah. welcome to Leo season. The sun enters Leo on July 22nd, kicking off a full month of creativity and ingenuity. It's a very homoerotic thing you just said. The sun enters Leo. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Inquisitive Mercury, who's in Cancer, connects with inspirational Uranus, who, who's... <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> you're a child. <laughs> who's in Taurus on the 22nd. When these two planets collide, we can expect to hear and feel flashes of brilliance Flash. brewing within. Oh. We will be ready to take action on making these visions a reality. When Mercury and Mars, who's in Aries, link up in the cosmos, <laughs> both these planets are the doers of the zodiac. Therefore, we can be assured that change is in the air. Tender Venus, who's in Gemini, squares off with elusive Neptune, who's in Pisces, for the third time this year on July 27th. Um... The this transit is the final piece of an, of the emotional puzzle that began on May third. The same day, expansive Jupiter, who's retrograde in Capricorn and Neptune retrograde, come together for the second time this year. Mars entered its pre, its pre retrograde zone on July twenty fifth, which means the action planet will start to slow down. Things may be hard to start and tensions will rise as a result of frustrations rising within. Mars retrograde begins in September 9th and lasts until November 13th. Mercury clears its retrograde shadow on July 26th, ending its retrograde journey for of the summer. Thank God. Um, but anyway. Mercury is no longer in retrograde. Yay! You know I did that. I my sister said it. Mercury's in retrograde. We, and, uh, we talked about that last week. Uh, are we going over next last week's horoscopes to see if they came true like we talked about? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. But let's read this week's first. All right. So okay. what, are you, what are you taking here? Okay. So we're going to do Aries. Um, Aries. God of Wars. Your love has a hot topic, especially since you're currently lost in your emotions. Write out your feelings on a piece of paper to find clarity on how you feel. Then you can make proper decisions based on your list. Be clear with your aim to receive your wishes. Taurus. The food. It may be challenging to get your plans moving in motion this week. However, with a little Abre Camino to light the way, anything is possible. Don't give up. You have all the time in the world to get them rolling and flowing. Have patience with yourself and your vision. Gemini, sometimes having the last word doesn't mean having the last word. It's best if you take a step back from drama and don't argue with those who are causing you pain. Avoiding confrontation this week will allow you to focus your energies on more important matters that demand your attention. Cancer, love is consuming this week because it's more confusing than ever. The key to having a lasting partnership is to be honest about your expectations with them. Same applies to friendships. You'll find that becoming that uh, sorry. You'll find that being accountable and not avoiding the truth will keep the spark shining bright and going strong. Leo. After months of shying away from the spotlight, the limelight is now on you. While you're feeling yourself in your element, you're longing for privacy when it comes to public matters, you don't have to overshare with others to be famous. Just create a balance that works for you. Where am I at? 
Virgo. I'm the Virgo. Oh, I'm doing you. Mm-hmm. I'm doing you. Wow, I haven't even done me. Oh, on the chair over there, on the stairs, everywhere. All right, Virgo. Overthinking matters <laughs> is causing bewilderment to brew within your already analytical mind. And let me tell you, this woman has an outrageously analytical mind. Stop replaying conversations within and trying to make sense of situations. Start feeling. Flex your heart muscles dunk, dunk, and make decisions based on your feelings and not your head. All the answers you long for are based on your emotions. Oh my goodness. Libra. It's been a long time since you've openly discussed your hopes and dreams for the future. Now you're given the cosmic chance to take stock of your visions. You'll find that you are at the impetus. <laughs> the impetus. It's hard for guys to say this word. Impetus. <laughs> it sounds like impetus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of greatness. You'll find that you are at the impetus of greatness. And all of your desires are achievable if you keep the faith. Scorpio. Created by nature, you're finding that work has become more like an intense hustle than anything else. You long for an inspirational break, which can be achieved by weekends, weeks end. Cleansing your space and energy with sage will help you to bring back your artistic flow. Trust the creative process. Sagittarius, allow your mind to decompress this week. This will require you to log off social media and disconnect from outside noises that are draining your mind. Not only will you feel revived by week's end, but you'll also be calm and be at peace within from having some downtime. Oh goodness, it's me. Capricorn. Before you express your feelings with your friends, take a moment to reflect on finding the right words to say. Although it is hard, doing this will allow you to speak honestly from the heart. Think before addressing your pals in order to avoid putting your foot in your mouth. I have a tendency to. Oh my god, you do. What did I say? What did I say? Yeah, I'm like, I can't believe you just said that. Oh my brain. god. I was talking, it was funny. The perfect example is the realtor in Florida. <laughs> Holy crap. We can come back to that. Yeah. Aquarius. It's important for you to set boundaries within your one-on-one -on -one relationships this week, even though the urge to give your all is high. Take note and understand your limitations before you over-promise your time and energy to your one and only. Be cognizant of how much love you can give. And finally, Pisces, before you take on new projects, make sure that you have the time to complete them. Organizing your daily life can be frustrating and challenging. However, it's more essential now than ever. This will also clear up your calendar to include fun activities in your schedule, which is a plus. That's our horoscopes this week. We decided to do all of them because uh, it was not fair that we were just doing yeah. ours. Yeah, I mean, who just wants to hear ours? Yeah, there's boring podcast people out there in New Jersey. No, we got to include everybody. And I, but, I have a tendency to uh, speak my mind when people ask me, to, oh, what's the time that's on your mind? I'm like, are you sure you want me to tell me what's on no. your mind? Because I'm not going to lie nor sugarcoat. I'm going to give you the exact truth of what is on my mind. No, please tell me. We were looking... In Florida, one of our friends was down there, and they were like, oh, this area is really nice, you should take a look, maybe move to Florida, blah, blah, blah. I'm not moving to Florida ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, but we went. We went, and the area that we stayed in was very nice, and uh, there are parts of Florida that we do like, but we were showing all of these houses, and I was not impressed. I'm from New Jersey, and we have all kinds of different houses here, and old houses, and new houses, and and the woman's like, I can't read your your, uh, your man in the back here. He's uh, very hard to like see if he's enthusiastic, is he enthused, is he not? <laughs> what, do you, what do you feel about? What do you think about these houses? And uh, I looked at it and I was like, you sure you want me to tell you? Because I'm going to tell you. And she's like, yes, please, I'd like to know. Like, they look like gaudy Italian mansions. And I was like, I, I don't like them. This, this is not my type of home. And I just tried to crawl under the seat in the car out the window. <laughs> at that moment. I did see one house during our trip that I did like, and that was about it. And that was because it had these little owls living in the yard that live, they lived in the ground. And they were protected. Like, you couldn't do anything near these. And I was like, oh my god, they're in the yard. I have protected animals living in my yard. Um, it was a nice house, too, though. But it was near a Walmart, which was not nice. Yeah, I didn't want to move from no. New Jersey to a part of Florida that was basically really hot New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> we were moving yeah. away from, I wanted, to move, I wanted to move away, we wanted to move away from strip malls. Yeah. And all that stuff. And we wanted to go someplace that was small town, and which we eventually did find. Yeah. But, um, 
That wasn't it. Where we stayed, that was beautiful. Matt Lachey. Oh my gosh. If you uh, ever have a chance to go to Matt Lachey, we highly recommend it. What a fun little spot. So, um, yes, that's, uh, I do, I will speak my mind if, if told to speak it, and then people will crawl and drop, and, and <laughs> or I'll say something that will offend one person, and it's like, alright dude, they'll like, toughen up a little bit there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. People say stuff to offend me all the time, and they have no issue with it. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, yeah. Nobody oh, yeah. holds back. They don't hold back on that. No, I mean, not being an atheist, not really. You're not believing you're burning hell, you're gonna die. Alright, so you wanted to go over your last oh, week's horoscope. Yeah, so let's go over last week's horoscope because I was like, I don't know what it's talking about. Usually it's pretty it's, it's a lot closer and I haven't had any of that happen this week and then Alrighty, it and I will say this was pretty spot on. <laughs> um, because ladies and gentlemen, I live with them. Oh, I'm a good guy, you know it. No, I know, but I get to see uh, it. I get to see it firsthand. <laughs> I don't. I don't have. I have weird meltdowns. Anyway, you do. All right. So Capricorn, last week you have a ton of emotions brooding, brooding within that's waiting to surface. This week your passions will boil over and you'll experience major frustrations with those in your inner circle. If you can. Feel your feels before having an emotional meltdown to understand the best way to approach your friend. Um, so that would be my girlfriend, which is Christine. <laughs> so at that point I hadn't had any issues or about anything, and then um, it was like the, the evening of the 20th or the 21st, yeah. the end of this horoscope, and we were, uh, we were working on the podcast because we wanted to get a few voiceover things going, a few um, intros and commercials, and I, I had this stuff written up, and I was like, here, read this, and... I want, to, I want to add this into the podcast. So, and it was after we came home from work, and, and she went to read it, and I, and I was, quite frankly, again, being blunt about it, I was just like, it doesn't sound good. It just sounds like you're, you know, it's like, it's like if we're saying, welcome to the Atheist and the Wish podcast. And that sounds really good, but if you say, like, welcome to the Atheist and the Wish podcast, it just sounds bleh. So everything sound, I was hearing it sound like that. And I tried to tell, I was like, you know, and she was like, what do you want me to do? And, and she was like, not... She just couldn't. She couldn't understand like what I wanted, what I wanted her to do, and uh, I didn't. I didn't want to get upset, so I didn't really want to continue to push the issue. So I decided to say, maybe we shouldn't do this completely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He just <laughs> basically nixed the whole thing like right then and there because I guess I didn't do things right. It wasn't that you were doing it right. You were, you were so good the week before what you were doing and your the vocal inflections, and then it just seemed like you weren't into it there. And I was like, well, maybe she's not really into this. And I would have told you if that was the case. And I and I told him that. I said, this has nothing to do with me not being into it. I was doing what I thought I needed to do, and he was not having it. So uh, we don't get into uh, we don't get into verbal sparring things. If we get into uh, a situation where we're where we're, we're not uh, we're upset, we don't still. Talk. No, uh, Brett goes and he goes and, and we'll sleep for like 14 hours. I like to call it, I brood. Yeah. I brood, I must yeah. brood. I must, I must go into my inner space. And I'm like, oh God, here I go with depresso boy. <laughs> I must go into my inner space and, and, and work this out amongst my brain cells. Just yeah. to see how. So, um, and I start ripping the house apart. Yeah. First thing is clean, cleans the house and the next thing you know we have a tegu. And, uh, exactly. <laughs> so uh, it was about a, a day and then... Um, and then we, we uh, Christine broke the silence, and then we, we discussed it a little bit more, and then um, we went back and we did the voiceovers again, and then it was perfectly good. I would like to add, though, that when we did the voiceovers the second time, things were used to ply Christine so she was a little more relaxed. You're welcome. What the hell does that mean? You were drinking. Yeah, and I'm drinking now. Exactly. And it was just, uh, Stop driving me to drink, <laughs> god damn it! <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, I work all day and I come home and then it's like, you don't sound right! You don't sound good. You don't, your voice doesn't turn me on anymore. <laughs> so that was our, that, so the horoscope was actually correct. That's why it was, the whole point of this little tirade was that, yes, I did, I did have a, a, a breakdown and um, this guy did exactly what happened in the horoscope. So I, again, horoscope is something I followed, and I'm like, wow, it's really weird with me. It's then I need to read this new one again because I gotta know what I'm getting into <laughs> What's for the going next on week. This week. All right, let's see. This has more to do. Actually, might be something to do with work this week. All right, let's see what. What's this Capricorn thing again? 
Before you express your oh yeah, before you express your feelings with your friends, because you're dying to say something to the neighbor. <laughs> and it's not mean or anything. It's just no, it's just the, it's too soon. It's too soon. It is. It's way too soon. Um, take a moment to reflect on finding the right words to say. Although it is hard, uh, <laughs> doing this will allow you to speak honestly from the heart. Think before addressing your pals in order to avoid putting your foot in your mouth. Yeah. I'm glad he said that. All right. I put my foot in my mouth. Yeah, yeah. I told you it was too soon. All right, I'll let that, I'll let that slide. It's, oh, really, it's really funny. And he'll, at some point, John will be like, yeah, well, yeah, it's funny. All right, all right. Yeah, he'll laugh one day, but not now. It's too soon. So, anyway, uh, moving right along. I'd like to give a shout out to Freddie Mercury and Jesus. We met last night at our neighbor's <laughs> yeah, backyard. Yeah, we did. You know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> um, really nice guys. Oh my god, I'm rolling away. Um, yeah, it was fun. We had a good time. They were, uh, they were a piece of work. You just got me out. Thank you. All right, so you want to do ghost stories or spooky stories? Well, that would require us to... Um, of course, do the intro to Not Spooky Stories, it's Chrissy's Creepy Chronicles. Chrissy Creepy Chronicles. Oh, she's a, she's a little tipsy folks. She's got kind of, I don't know how to say, a chronicle. I chronic, I forgot what. Oh, could you explain and hold up to the, uh, the camera for the people that will be showing us on Patreon. There you go. You got that from the Whetstone in the... Uh... Yes, the Whetstone in Brattleboro, Vermont. It's a wonderful microbrewery that's a restaurant, which we absolutely love. It's on the Connecticut River right at the border of Vermont and New Hampshire. And uh, it's the most scenic, most beautiful place. Like you walk in there and you just don't ever want to leave. Like you could just move in and stay there forever. <laughs> at least I could. The food is great and I can eat it because a lot of it, I, I can't eat gluten, dairy, or soy. And I can get a ton of stuff there to eat that I probably haven't eaten in years because I can't get it here and I just don't feel like trying to make it so I love people that listen to these types of podcasts that are food intolerant and whatnot it's a, it's a thing yeah a big shout out to the Whetstone Station it's if you ever go to Vermont go there if you got any kind of food issues they really accommodate well and they have wonderful booze they have like every kind of cider and beer on the planet <laughs> All right, Chrissy's Creepy Chronicles, are, are, you, uh, are, you, are you prepared to... I am totally prepared. Okay. So, the story I'm going to read, this bunch of stories aren't necessarily true, from what I know. It doesn't need to be true, it just needs to be creepy. Yeah. Creepy, 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 yeah. creepy, creepy, creepy. Creepy, spooky, spooky, creepy. So, um, the one I'm going to read is called Nunchucks. So... Which, this one might be true. Um, it says, Michelle Freelich Young had a strange experience with her two-year-old daughter. So, when my daughter was two, I found her twirling paper towel tubes tied with twine in the air. I asked her, what are you doing? She said, I'm practicing. I'm practicing with nunchucks. And I was completely confused, as she had no way of knowing what they were. I asked her what she meant, and she said that Adam had told her how to make them and showed her each night how to use them. She went on to say that Adam told her to practice because she may need to know how to defend herself one day. I almost freaked out, but asked her what Adam looked like. She said he was tall, blonde, and had blue eyes. She said, Mommy, you know how he looks. You know him. He died of a headache. I had to leave the room. You see, four months before she was born, my tall, blonde, blue-eyed martial arts pro friend had died of a brain aneurysm at the age of 27. She had not spoken of him since that day, so I'm not sure if I scared her with my reaction, or if she completed her lessons. <laughs> Ooh. That's blonde, interesting. Blonde, I wonder how you had an aneurysm. Blonde, blue-eyed, good-looking guy. Oh. Structure. Things happen. 
He's gotta go that way, doesn't it? Yeah, all. it's right. sad. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. So, so uh, now it's my turn to corner of the bed, put a flashlight on, and get spooky. Good uh, Let's see. This is called the chair. Sounds interesting. Uh, this is actually submitted to Reddit by someone named Scoop Whoop. <laughs> so, bravo, Scoop Whoop. Okay, here we go. When my sister Betsy and I were kids, our family lived for a while in a charming old farmhouse. We loved exploring its dusty corners and climbing the apple tree in the backyard. But our favorite thing was the ghost. We called her mother because she seemed so kind and nurturing. Some mornings, Betsy and I would wake up and on each of our nightstands, we'd find a cup that hadn't been there the night before. Mother had left them there, worried that we'd get thirsty during the night. She just wanted to take care of us. Among the home's original furnishings was an antique wooden chair which we kept against the back wall of the living room. Whenever we were preoccupied watching TV or playing a game, Mother would inch that chair forward across the room towards us. Sometimes she'd manage to move it all the way to the center of the room. We always felt sad putting it back against the wall. Mother just wanted to be near us. Years later, long after we'd moved out, I found an old newspaper article about the farmhouse's original occupant, a widow. She'd murdered her two children by giving them each cup of poisoned... Oh, fuck. Can you do it over again? <laughs> you did really good. It gets, it gets so long that I get fucking... You did really good. I was doing good up until there. So can't you, um, you need to start over again? Yeah, it's not going to okay. start over. Do you need I got, I, there's no saving that because that was the whole punchline was that whole fucking thing. Do you need something to drink? I'm out of beer. I guess I can have another one. Oh! Beer break. Beer break! <laughs> it's not all funny games doing podcasts. Sometimes you gotta. I have a beer up. break. Yards Brewery Pale Ale from Philadelphia, PA. Gotta say, it's a wonderful lager. Cause I'm a lager girl. In case you wanna know. Okay. Hold on. Unless you wanna record this. <laughs> uh, if I record. When my sister Betsy and I were kids, our family lived for a while in a charming old farmhouse. We loved exploring its dusty corners and climbing the apple trees in the backyard. But our favorite thing was the ghost. We called her mother because she seemed so kind and nurturing. Some mornings, Betsy and I would wake up and on each of our nightstands, we'd find a cup that hadn't been there the night before. Mother had left them there, worried that we'd get thirsty during the night. She just wanted to take care of us. Among the home's original furnishings was an antique wooden chair, which we kept against the back of the wall. Whenever we were preoccupied watching TV or playing a game, Mother would inch that chair forward across the room towards us. Sometimes she'd manage to move it all the way to the center of the room. We always felt sad putting it back against the wall. Mother just wanted to be near us. Years later, Long after we'd moved out, I found an old newspaper article about the farmhouse's original occupant, a widow. She'd murdered her two children by giving them each a cup of poisoned milk before bed. Then she hung herself. The article included a photo of the farmhouse's living room with a woman's body hanging from a beam. Beneath her, knocked over, was that old wooden chair placed exactly in the center of the room. Did it get colder in here, or is it just me? Whoa. 
Oh my goodness, well that was fun. <laughs> that was pretty good. good. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was like, oh, it's mom. Mom's gonna kill your ass. <laughs> yeah. This is some good ones. Oh, that was, uh, that was fun stuff. Fun stuff. We're gonna try, we try to do this live here near the uh, vernal equinox. No, it's that spring. Yeah, it's uh, What's the uh, fall? Uh, Harvest uh, moon. Uh, autumnal. Oh, the autumnal yes. um, equinox. It'll be. Uh, Hopefully we'll mess them up, but we'll do some spooky ones then. Yeah! Wow! Maybe we should do them around a fire where it's crackling. Oh yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that might be our... Oh, no! Out by the pumpkin The chimney. pumpkin head. Yeah. The pumpkin chimney. We'll try to do something. Maybe that we'll might do be a, fun. Maybe we'll try to do a live YouTube thing or something. Or that might be cool. We'll that. We'll yeah. See if we can get the bandwidth out there. That would be good. Oh, goodness. What else do we have this week? Mm -hmm. Um... We did the horoscope. Oh, you know what we wanted to talk about? We Because uh, last week we were touching upon Joseph Campbell, um, which is, uh, I've been listening to on the way back and forth to work. Um, but we wanted to talk about, you know, what the kinds of things influenced us to, uh, as children and as, as young adults, to uh, think the way we do. And, and um, Chrissy wanted me to talk about more about Joseph Campbell, but I was like, eh, I want to listen to more podcasts, uh, more books about him and um, to speak about him with more clarity. So I was like, well, who, who are you into? And um, when I first met Christine, she had a very weird email address. It was tallis, tallis7 at yahoo.com, mm -hmm. um, which no, no, no longer is her email address, but it was tallis7, T-A-L-L-I-S-S. Yeah. And I was like, what is Talis 7? I didn't know how tall, how exactly how tall is you? Well, the thing is, the name should actually be dun 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 T A L L I S. But that was taken. So I just added the extra S on. You extra S it. Yeah, and then it everybody got weird about it. Like, they thought it was tallish. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm not, it's not tallish. I'm not tall. Well, you're, I mean, you're taller than the average woman, which is five foot four, and you're five foot six. Yeah. So you're five foot six, which is... But it's kind of funny, though, because um, when we were doing the dating thing... Yahoo Personals. Oh, yeah, we were on, when we were on Yahoo Personals, there was actually a guy that contacted me. And because of the email... He assumed it meant tallish, like I was tall. He was all about that. Yeah, and, and I was You're like, six foot, that turns me on. Yeah, and um, I was like, I didn't understand where I was coming from, because that was the first person I actually took it that way. <laughs> and I'm like, tallish. I'm not tall. I said I'm five six. I'm not tall really at all. I'm like average. He's like, well, your 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 email says you're tallish, and I'm like, no, that's not the way it is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that was a funny kind of quirky thing at the time. But anyway, the name Talis comes from a uh, group of books written by Robert Holstock. Um, so I'm gonna read you about what the books are about. Um, the first book is Mythago Wood in the series, and it says, um, In Mythago Wood, Robert Holstock gave us an intricate world spun from the stories of Irish and English mythology and a great forest called Ryehope Wood. Sleeping in... Uh, so, oh, can we do that over? Okay, go ahead. In Mythago Wood, Robert Holstock. Oh, oh, I, I didn't actually start recording, I just started moving. Mm -hmm. Hold on. And. Go. In Mythago Wood, Robert Holstock gave us an intricate world spun from the stories of Irish and English mythology and a great forest called Ryehope Wood, steeped in mystery and legend, whose heart contains secrets that will change all who behold them. Young Talis sets out on a quest to discover the forest secrets. When she was just an infant, she lost her brother, Harry, to Ryehope Wood. Her adolescent fancies now cause her to suspect he is still alive and in grave danger. Talis follows Harry into the primal otherworld, armed only with magic masks and clues left by her grandfather. 
Eventually, the primitive forest gives way to Lavandus itself, a fascinating and terrible realm where she is forced to confront the Mythagos, physical manifestations of legends of humanity's collective unconscious. Join Talus on her quest into the ultimate unknown and be invited into one of the finest and most compelling mythologies you will ever encounter. Talus going off into the woods. Yes. Sounds like you. The woods doing yeah, anything. Yeah, little, yeah. It gets, um, it's a very kind of graphic and raw kind of. And graphic. Uh, it can be graphic. Graphically and it, it can be, or graphically. In all different ways, yeah. It can be sexually graphic, it can be oh. violently graphic. Um, it is primitive in every aspect of the word. So what possessed you to use Talus as your email address? I just, um, in a weird kind of way, I related to her as a child and how she was absorbed by the natural world mm -hmm. around her. There you go. And um, that's kind of how I was as a kid. I was always outdoors. I was, I was fortunate enough to grow up in an area which was very undeveloped. Uh, you know, for being someone of such a young age. And I was fortunate to grow up in a time where I left my house and my parents had no idea where I was for hours. And I was in swamps and forests and woods and vacant lots and boat yards and you, you name it, we had it in, you know, the area I lived in. And that is where we played as kids. And there was a lot of imagination involved in that. No one was home. No, was, no one was behind video games, even though, um, oh my God, what was it? Atari. That was yeah. Just when we were kids, kids. That just started to come out, but it was very expensive, and not oh. many people had it, and it was not anything like <laughs> games are today. Um, but it was the beginning. But. When I was a child, no one I knew had that. We were all outdoors. We had to use our brains. Yeah, so. we had to use a little bit of imagination. Mm -hmm. you know, playing around as well. Yeah. BMX and bikes. Yep. But you related to the character in the book. And yeah. Yep. And that's why I I keep them and I reread them. I think I've read Lavandus like three or four times. It's just there's just something that really, you know, clicks with me with that. So you recommend you recommend for good reading? This is fan this fantasy reading, fantasy. Yeah, yeah I would um, I would call it a fantasy, definitely. Um, but you know, just be prepared is not anything cushy <laughs> at all. You know, there's going to be some very disturbing situations that occur in the books. Interesting. Um, they, it's, uh, Christine and I have uh, it had similar tastes and kinds of of stuff. Although I read. I was reading more Star Wars books and whatnot. But I used to read. I had the, the um, gnomes and the giants and the fairies book. That mm -hmm. we both, I was like, I can't believe you had this. But uh, I read. I read comic books all the time. It's my escape from the horrors of reality, where the heroes always, almost always win. And actually, I think I'd maybe I'd make that a segment for me in the uh, in future episodes. I'll take one comic book that I'm reading that week and just throw it out there. And see if I'm with the atheist is reading. The atheist reads comic books because I read. If I'm not reading a comic book, I'm literally reading a manual on some kind of technical nonsense yeah, in order a, to understand. Like, I don't read like books to just go escape into some dramatic. No, it's just not. It doesn't work for me. I just. But you read comic books, read and comic that's books. a lot of drama in comics. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot, but it's it's just fun over the top. So mm -hmm. a little bit more morality in there. But if I'm not reading that, I'm, I'm definitely reading technical manuals I'm, I'm, and I'm learning stuff like that so I'm, I just know in between it's either hardcore this or it's complete like I'm 15 years old and yeah. although comic books I mean it's, it's obviously they're well written literature because they're multi-billion dollar movies yeah. being made off of comic books um, no the stories are amazing yeah it's it's, uh, it's modern mythology is, is what I look at and people People have gotten into comic books now, but they don't call them comic books. They wait for they wait for the it's called graphic novel to come mm -hmm. out. So it'll be like a compendium of twenty issues of a comic. Yeah. And then they'll you know you spend forty dollars on a graphic novel. It's not the same though. 
I prefer like I like getting little snippets every week and then you mm -hmm. and you read it. And um, I, the thing, the only difference between a comic, this is what I think about comic books. And people look down on comics as though they're, they're not from your literature, and I, and I don't, I disagree with that because in a comic book you have the artist and and you have a, a writer. The artist is doing a lot of work that a writer in a book would do. So when a writer has to describe all these things that are going on, a comic book writer says, um, let's say, Thor enters the scene, throws his hammer at the villain. So, and then, then, then he writes the dialogue. Mm -hmm. But in a book, he couldn't just say, Thor enters the room and throws the hammer at the villain because that sounds boring as hell. You'd have to explain how he was majestically pouncing mm -hmm. and, and, and add all the verbiage in there. Yeah. But in a comic book, you see, what's this, it's like a, it's, it's a, a movie inside your mind that you're, you're filling in between the panels. Mm -hmm. There's actually a guy uh, who wrote a whole book on what your brain is doing when you're reading a comic book because you're looking at still pictures and you're reading prose, but you're getting... You're getting the movement into your own brain. You're getting it all. So it's, that's why I like comic books. It's, mm -hmm. It takes you away from ground. It's very visual. Yes, it's the visually stimulating. Mm -hmm. Wee! And that's, that's why I enjoy reading. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's fun reading. Um, yeah, I've, and I've also now, since I do this commute every day, I do a lot of audio books where I just listen to the books, which is uh, fun. One. That's why I'm re I've listened to The People's History of the United States. I listen to a lot of Joseph Campbell. Um, that's what I'm doing now. That's my that's my book. Like that. Yeah, I'll try some audios. That might be a good idea. Yeah, tell me what you like. We'll yeah. uh, snag some audio books. You know. That's so cool. Yeah, some good books. Um, let's see. Is there anything else you want to discuss this week? We're up on 47 minutes. We usually do about 50 minutes on oh the uh, on the podcast. We're almost there, as they All say. Right. No, I mean, I, I I think we covered a lot of the good stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, um, I think at, the, at this point of the podcast, we should remind everybody that uh, we are doing a podcast, of course, because that's what you're listening to, but many of you know us from uh, the magazine that we do with Pinups. We are still doing a magazine that we're still looking for people for, and we had a few people that have hit us up even before we have got this out, Yeah, people hitting us up. Um, so we're looking for submissions to our new magazine, which is Atheist and Witch Magazine. Yes. We're looking for... Uh, Gothic, witchy, mermaid, fantasy, fairy, yeah, cyberpunk, yeah, post apocalyptic kind of pinup stuff. But we're also looking for art, yeah, and articles and stories and um, advertising. If you want to advertise, we're open, yes, it's gonna be in a magazine that'll mm -hmm. be a print on demand that we'll be putting out quarterly. Yes. So, we want that's part of one of the things we're gonna do. Um, so if you want to know. If you want to submit to that, all the information is at our website, theatheistandthewitch.com. Go there and, and you'll see the, uh, right up on the top there, you'll see the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, you can visit us at our Twitter account, which is The Atheist and The Witch, uh, which is mainly where people find us. Mm -hmm. and we're also on Twitter and we're on Facebook at The Atheist and The Witch. You can go like our Facebook page. And, um, by the time we get to this third episode, we will definitely have our Patreon will definitely be up and running at patreon.com mm -hmm. forward slash the atheist and the witch. And we're not going to be doing uh, like a monthly subscription or anything. We're going to uh, put it out there on a per creation basis. So we're going to be putting out uh, artwork by for Christine. There'll be prints that you can buy to help support us in our little endeavors here. Candles. Helps candles. There'll yeah. be. Uh, for the people who are into Chrissy the witch, yeah, the witch will be in there as well, doing her thing with oh, some yeah. much uh, more risque yep. photo shoots and videos. Um, Maybe we'll do a sound bath one night. Sound bath sounds interesting. Yeah, we could do that and cleanse everybody. That sounds, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. And we'll um, we'll also have um, videos on there that will be exclusive to Patreon of, mm -hmm. of Crazy Adventures, mm -hmm. and we're also going to have a YouTube channel. If you want to go to that, that's going to be youtube.theatheistandthewitch.com. We'll have some stuff up on there about mm -hmm. our little antics and adventures. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's all the ways to find us. Yeah, and you get to see our graveyard walks, our oh, yeah, trail we'll walks. We'll do a graveyard walk with the lantern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll be interesting. So yeah, we have we'll, a, a lot of... uh, We'll show you a little Stella. Stella's our little, uh, little grave that I've uh, 
kind of taken to taking care of. She's a little girl. She's four years old when she passed. So, That's sad. yeah. So I plant flowers for her. She was much loved. You could tell. We loved Stella. Stella. Yeah. Stella. 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 Oh my goodness. Uh, so we're coming to the end of the podcast here. So um, mm -hmm. it's time for I guess the sign offs. This is one of our. our our music will be playing in the background there. That will be going. So, what's your uh, what's your sign? Well, actually, I'll do. I guess I'll do my sign off this week. Um, mm -hmm. Gee, what do I got to say? It's really insightful and, and interesting. I, I've just sort of lost my mind here at the at the end. But um, let's see. You, I, you know what? B the infection in the body of evil. That's what you need to be. Oh, well, that's a good yeah. one. The infection in the body of evil. Always, I'd like to remind you that we have a store, store.theatheistinthewitch.com, that you can go to catch all of our crazy, goofy sayings and stuff that we come up with to support us. Okay, so I'm going to read a little quote that's actually out of Mythago Wood. Um, and it's a quote by Ralph Vaughn Williams. And it says, I had that sense of recognition. Here was something which I had known all my life, only I did not know it. It's deep. Yeah. I knew it, but I didn't know it. No. Nope. So. You didn't know it until you <clears throat> had it brought to your attention. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, he was commenting upon his first discovery of British folklore and folk music. So that's interesting. Yeah, British folklore is great. So like those books that the mm -hmm. books we were just talking about. Yep. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, that's it for me for the atheist and the witch this week. How's the witch? Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.